the names on the screen are sometimes people use other people's Zoom accounts, and I'll go, I'll call. Oh no, so no, John, and they go, no, 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 my name's Frank. I'm like, oh fuck. So it's Clint no. and Matthew. Yep. Yeah. Or Matt. No. Matt's fine. Matt, yeah, my Matt. name's oh fuck. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> Shit. What? In the spirit of unrestricted exercise and celebration of our First Amendment rights, tonight's episode may contain adult language. Be advised. Meet the Pressers with Matt Mallory and Clint Necro. Brought to you by Public Safety and Education and the Trigger Pressers Union. And now, your hosts... Welcome to Meet the Pressers. I'm Matt Mallory, your host, and my esteemed co-host, Clint Macro, is going to introduce our guest in a second. Our show is about trigger pressers. We also do an occasional gear review, talk about faith, blow things up, yep, that too, and political activism. Clint, take it away. I'm excited to introduce our special guest here today. Tony Blauer is the man that was the first person to incorporate Body's Natural Reaction and Neuroscience into the training world. He's the owner of Blauer Tactical Systems and the developer of the Spear System. Tony, it's a tremendous honor to have you on our show here today. This episode is brought to you by Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Presser is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, McLean Corporation, ASP, Custom Poker Chip Company, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by these fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. My system, Spear, Spontaneous Protection, Enabling Accelerator Response, Spontaneous Protection is the startle flinch response. It's hardwired in all of us. Accelerator response or the Pavlovian style drill, the classical conditioning drills, where we teach you how to weaponize the startle flinch. Armed or unarmed, we have a we have a concealed carry combatives course. My philosophy is this: unless your gun is duct taped to your hand, when somebody ambushes you, your fucking hands are nowhere near your gun. Yeah, and people yeah. fuck that up all the time. And that's yep. you know part of part of what we talk about is someone goes, look out, and fucking hands come up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If your gun's in your ankle or in your appendix carry or in right. a pocket or in your purse, you're no, so people don't realize that when you flinch, your hands come up to cover the head, and then they push away danger. Mm-hmm. They will not go to the gun. There's also a, a study from some guys um, uh, uh, called Reflex Based uh, Defense out of out of uh, the Holland. Uh, Netherlands and they 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 show these videos of officers approaching vehicles where the guy pulls out a, you know sim or UTM yep. and and out of the car it's a headshot right so a, a officer approaches the car and they're told hey it's a scenario go do your law enforcement stuff and then they ambush the guy and what they have is when the guy when they see the gun come out the officers flinch and then their hands, they start to come up, and then they, their cognitive brain kicks in and goes to the gun, yep. but action's faster than reaction. Mm-hmm. Yep. And in an ambush, the bad guy's always action. Yep. And so when you got somebody has the jump on you, if you're trying to intercept a complex motor skill behind the curve with your complex motor skill, you always fucking lose. That's just physics and math. And so they showed that 70% of, the, of, of cops who are ambushed get shot in the face. Mm. And... Um, and then they showed this this speed differential that the startle flinch this 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 primal gross motor reflex that I've been teaching for since mm-hmm. 1986 yep. uh, is way faster than any complex motor skill and I'm like duh and but they did this study now we've got data white paper data that a that a, a, a university did a study on the math but it's the same shit that I've been telling people for for decades, decades. And, it, and it comes back to your concealed clint your concealed carry course you know matt you're whether whether you're doing uh, a law enforcement course or or uh, for good samaritans and private sector yep. um you got to weather the ambush contain the violence we call it the three c's clear control counter counter yeah i gotta clear myself from the line of fire of a fist a blade or a bullet or a chair or a machete or whatever, yeah. whatever's coming at me, I've got to clear. And to do the most efficient way to do that 
is to trust how your body naturally, instinctively, mm-hmm. reflexively yeah. moves. And that's, and that's really the whole foundation yeah. of everything we do. Mm-hmm. I got a book on my shelf here, and it's a conversation. And, and sometimes I read it, and I don't know where it is right now. It's, it's uh, I don't, whatever, but I'll paraphrase it. But it says, you know, like person A says to person B, listen, I'm willing to be wrong if you're willing to just listen to me with an open mind. And, and just tell me that if I can convince you otherwise, that you'll be detached enough to, to weigh and consider what I'm talking about. And, 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 and acknowledge that maybe your assumption was incorrect. You know, and I asked people like, I'll read it. And I made it sound a little bit too pedantic there, but it was like really flowing about like, just let's just talk. We both can't be right. Let's just talk about the thought, the object, and then, and then move from there. Are you willing to admit that you might be wrong? Because if we can't have a conversation, you know, if I tell you, Matt, hey, don't ever do that. Like this will, this is so dangerous. And you go, no, 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 no. I've been practicing it for 10 years and my muscle memory. And I go, yeah, but like there's no evidence that that ever manifests itself in the real world. There's zero CCTV. There's no phones. Mm-hmm. There's nobody like, like don't do that. Take it out of your, no. And, and that's how a lot of defensive tactics and combatives are. Mm-hmm. Like it's just passed down, passed down, passed down. Nobody ever goes like, does this ever happen? That's mm-hmm. what I did in the 80s. I reverse engineered the entire system by going like, what actually happens? So we started only looking at the bad guy. We didn't look at the master of our style going, wouldn't it be cool if this happened in a fight? Right, right. And, and you did that back in the 80s before there was video evidence, any kind of empirical right, data like right. that. I mean, you were pulling right. the data I, from books and yeah. word of mouth. I, I did that before neuroscience was a thing. Mm-hmm. So before people could go, Oh, look, here's a neurotransmitter. This is a myelin sheath. This is, this is how, this is deep practice. This is brain-based training. This is interleaving effect. I was doing that in the eighties. Of course I didn't have labels. I couldn't explain it. Right. Now I can explain where block-based training, which is you do this and you get your yellow belt, you do this, you get your orange belt. Okay. Stand in a line. Role player grabs your gun. Okay. Grabs your gun. Okay. Pin his hand, smash his radial nerve, chop the brachial nerve, step back, transition. And, and you think you're learning it except you know, like that shit never worked. And there's a whole video, there's a whole video from Caliber Press on ultimate survivors of cops who lost their guns in gunfights. And they describe, he target glanced my gun and then he was on top of me. And I heard that once, like I heard that once in 1994 and immediately created a, a, a weapon protection program that is the most effective thing that any, that's like, like, and it takes me five, 10 minutes to teach it. Hmm. And, and I, I, uh, I debuted it at the 1995 ASLET, American Society Law Enforcement Trainers Conference. In, in, uh, they're no longer around, replaced by ILEDA. Uh, mm-hmm. And so, uh, um, but people were like blown away by it. But what it was, it was about understanding that we are human weapons and how do we weaponize the startle flinch. And all of this, uh, the way I did it was interleaving, which is, which is this idea of like, I'm training like four or five different pathways at the same time. We're blending auditory, visual, tactile uh, components. We're having a Socratic conversation. I'm going like, Matt, what do you think happened here? I don't know, well, how would you fix that? Would you, as opposed to memorize these moves. Right, yeah. And, and so full circle, so I don't leave this like, oh, like open-ended, that quote that I shared of these two guys having this conversation, I go, so here are these two guys, they're, they're, they want to debate. But one of them says, I'm willing to debate you on this if you're willing to admit you're wrong. And I will admit I'm wrong. But can we start from a place where we both consent that one of us isn't correct on this? <laughs> and then I ask people, like, like how, who do you think said that? How old is it? And then people go, I don't know. Yeah, that could have been like a conversation yesterday with two smart dudes. It could have been a debate thing. It could have been, it sounds like, like a little stiff language, 50s, 60s, and it was fucking Plato and Aristotle. You wow. know, it's like, and so the idea is that, that, you know, when people say, when I have like detractors saying, oh, the spear hasn't changed, I go, well, physiology hasn't changed. The startle flinch, the cross extensor reflex, myelinization, neurotransmitters, like, like, you know, auditory exclusion, tunnel vision, yeah. uh, you know, like all of that shit. That's all the sciences of survival learning research that's not going to change. What's changing is how brazen bad guys are. What's changing is that when, when I grew up, I'm going to be 60 in May. When I grew up and you got in a fight in school, 
you shook hands and yeah. kind of like looked at each other. Maybe you came friends, maybe you didn't, but nobody went and got a gun and right. came back and shot everybody. The startle flinch bypasses executive function. I'm not a big fan of spiders. You guys probably aren't either because you're <laughs> ghost, right? Uh, I do I do courses in Australia and they got like spiders and snakes there that our spiders and snakes are scared of, right? <laughs> right. But they're acclimated to it. They're like, hey, don't go down there. There's usually less, like, like fuck, whoa, whoa, you know. But I'm doing a, I'm doing a podcast last week, and I was out in uh, the backyard with the dogs, and I was moving some shit around. I was in in some of the bushes, and uh, I'm sitting here talking, and all of a sudden my arm starts to itch, and I'm like this here, and uh, I go like this, like reflexively, and I'm still looking, and then I feel like something tickling. I look down, and a fucking like like a tiny, tiny spider crawls out from here. Just mm -hmm. something when I was in the bushes, putting yeah. some garbage and stuff got, you know, got on me. But like, it was so fucking small that you might even go, Oh, look how cute. <laughs> but you freaked out. I wouldn't say I freaked out. <laughs> Thanks for throwing me under the bus, dude. But, it, but, but what I did was there uh, wasn't supposed to be a spider under right. my watch yeah. during the podcast. Right. So I itch, I do this. And then I look down, I see it come out, and I go, oh, fucking shit. Like, yeah. Because my brain has. So here's the whole thing is I'm the guy in the 80s who figured this shit out, brought it to law enforcement, brought Still it to military, brought it to martial arts. And I tell people, and that's like our, even our whole no fear program, KNOW, is just because you go through the program doesn't mean that you have no fear anymore. Right. It's a whole misnomer, right? Controlling so it. That, yeah, exactly. It's. When it comes to startle flinch, what we're trying to do is improve our perception speed so we improve our, our reaction time. We just want to be able to recognize danger faster. And if we get a fear spike, what we absolutely want to do is manage the fear spike. So the way I describe stuff is there are four phases that are these, these metaphysical, esoteric phases. So um, where, where most people go, I go, well, what would you do if a guy at an ATM came up and you go, well, I control the distance, I watch his hands, I make sure that my weapon side is back, and I'm going, you're not doing any of that fucking shit. When, and they're like, what? And I go, here's what you're going to do. You're going to go, are you fucking kidding me? You're going to go into denial first, mm -hmm. like, if it's happening to you as a human. Very yeah. different, and this is where people get in arguments because you practice scenarios so statically that you think it's just going to process this. But if you listen to what I'm saying, it'll make you safer for all, all the people listening. An ambush is an ambush because it's an ambush. <laughs> and so people go, well, I'm going to practice counter ambush. I go, you can't practice counter ambushing. You can practice countering a failed ambush. But you, the semantics are important here. Mm -hmm. And what that means is if I'm at an ATM and I pull my money and I turn around, there's a guy with a gun or a knife there, I'm not going to go like, like the old uh, original Terminator with a little screen in my head and go, okay, uh, this, is a, uh, this is a fold Emerson CQC7 folding knife. Uh, he's in his right hand. He's this distance here. Right. Harry here. Do my, this Krav Maga, straight blast, Jeet Kune Do. You're not doing that. You're going, fuck, where did this guy come from? There's right. a moment of embarrassment and anger yeah. that, you, that he violated your personal space. There's, yep. there's a whole bunch of things that go. So the whole thing is this is we need situational awareness, but we don't have great situational awareness if we don't understand self-awareness. <laughs> self-awareness is the fucking gateway I like to proper and effective situational awareness. Example, if you don't realize that you're an asshole, if you don't realize that you're prejudiced, if you don't realize that you're overconfident, if you don't realize that you suffer from cognitive dissonance, that you think you live in a bubble, or I don't need to train, I carry. How many times have you met somebody who oh, goes, yeah. Yeah, I carry. Yeah. Like, that's why I carry, man. I go, did you even look at what happened during this active shooter right. thing? And you don't carry in this state here or on this airplane here or in this right. country. Here. Or did you, did you practice? You know, do you, right. do you have you even tried to draw from the holster? Because most people shoot themselves when they're drawing or reholstering that. It's, it's yeah. even, you're 100% right, but it's even deeper than that. You know, this is back in the 80s, detect, defuse, defend. Detect and avoid, defuse and deescalate. And a push comes to shove, defend. If you only practice gun, shh, gun, shh, right. gun, shh. Mm -hmm. when, so, when now when, you're, when someone's there and you go, that guy looks weird, my heart's starting to race. I got That's my the, hair on my back and neck yeah. coming. That's the defect or detect. 
this is the situational awareness. Yep. But self-awareness is I'm scared right now. What should I do? Right. And so I was talking about the four protocols, situational awareness, self, self-awareness, fear spike, fear management. When you get a fear spike, you don't just transition to a complex motor skill. So here I am in Australia. And just to show you the psychology of this, I'm told that uh, some guy is going to jump me at a seminar. Wow. And I get really angry because I'm on tour. I was a single dad. I had my, my 18-month-old son with me. But I take, I take all threats seriously. Right, you should, as you should. And, and I say to, I got a bunch of cops who are at the seminar, and I say to them, look, it's probably nothing. It's for like, jag- like most people who are, are, you know, if you read Gavin DeBecker's work, most people who are really dangerous don't announce that they're dangerous, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I say, but I'll take the threat seriously. And I go, I'd like you two guys to like stay at the door and anything weird looking comes in, let's not let them in or let's have the confrontation be there, not during the seminar. And you just like identify yourself as police officers and what have you. Yep. And so we do this here. It's anticlimactic, but it's kind of a cool story. Uh, I hear over five minutes to start, I go, you know, I fucking I've been worrying about this for like an hour for nothing. What a bunch of assholes. And all of a sudden I hear the loudest Harley Davidson I've ever heard pull up in the parking lot and we're in the country and I walk to the window and I see this guy who is incongruous with everybody like everyone in the seminary they're martial artists they're law enforcement they're groomed they look like you guys they're groomed they're ready to learn yeah and I see this guy get off the bike you know and it looks like he's got his jeans and his t-shirt spray painted on him that's how tight everything is like it's like like ripped (laughs) And he gets off slowly and he looks around like he's scanning. And he looks around and he turns. And I'm like 30 feet away from him, elevated in this, this elevated rec center in the parking lots uh, below. And he doesn't see me. He doesn't see I'm looking through a window. It's probably, you know, part of his, uh, it's, the glare is probably significant that he doesn't know that I'm watching him. And he turns around and he's staring like, like at the window. And I see him look down and adjust a fixed blade knife that's hidden under his belt. I can fucking see it. Wow. And I'm like, and I step back from the window and I'm like, holy fuck. Like I look around at the room and it's like, like I'm in church and then there's this biker, right? In terms of like- Out of the, place. Just totally wrong. Mm-hmm. My heart starts to race. I'm like, shit. And I'm thinking what to do. And I'm like standing here like this and he starts to walk up. I go, this, this must be the guy. <laughs> like, what the hell? And I go, I got two cops at the door. They're going to see that he's incongruent. They're going to track him. They're going to go, you sure you're at the right place, man? And, and they're going to look down at him. They're going to scan him because they're mm-hmm. cops. And you could see the edge of the handle and the blade. I mean, it was across the front of his, you know, it was a small fixed blade. And you could see it embedded in, in, his, in his waist. And so I go, so here's what will happen. There'll be a struggle at the door. They'll be fighting. He'll pull out the, the knife. They'll be struggling with him. I'll just come in. I'll fucking just drop him. And I'll, you know, I'll, I'll save the day, but they'll start the save. And uh, so I'm there like this, and I'm, I'm kind of like this, and I'm watching. And he walks in, and it's, God, I might. God, I might. God, I, and he walks right in. And I'm like, the fuck? <laughs> he just walks in. And they're like, yeah, registration's right over there, mate. And I'm like, whoa. And I step back again. And I see him walk over and I go, dude, what are you doing? Like, and so I need to understand that here I am. I've been training 30 years at this time. I created cerebral self-defense. I created high gear. I'm on the road teaching. But this, that this was happening was so incongruous that it thrust me into the fear loop. <laughs> Very different than your cop, your training. This is your perimeter. Don't let anyone through there. That's yep. different. Yep. Right? Um, very different. You're, hey, you're a bouncer at this club. If a guy doesn't, if he's not wearing the right shit, don't let him in. Could a fight erupt? Could you get stabbed? Could, yeah. But you're standing there actually imposing your will and you're looking for problems. Mm. Like, like the classic line from Roadhouse, uh, you know, when... Uh, Do not eat the big white mint. No, that wasn't the one. <laughs> um, but was that Roadhouse one or the fake one? <laughs> no, that was the first one, yeah. Okay, good. The only real one. So the... Where uh, uh, Patrick Swayze's character, Dalton character, you know, when he, when he picks up the girl and she goes, have you ever lost a fight? And he goes, no. And she goes, really? How's that? She goes, because those who go looking for trouble are never quite as prepared as those who are waiting for trouble. Mm. Right? But when you're just trying to be like you're a single dad with your kid and you're trying to yeah. teach 
self-defense, you're not looking for trouble. You're looking to make people safer. And so here's what happens. I'm standing there, but and this is why I said self-awareness is the most important thing. And this is so cool. I hope you guys are tracking this and hope your audience is digging this. Yeah. My situational awareness system saw a bad guy with a knife. Saw him walk up 40 feet, walk upstairs, saw him walk by two cops. So my situational awareness is working fine. Bad guy, knife, threat. But I didn't do anything because I was in the fear loop. Mm. The most important thing that I do is I teach people how to identify fear and recognize fear instead of rationalize fear. Mm. And, and so rationalize, you know, the play on words, the rational lie we tell ourselves, another way of talking about cognitive dissonance. I'm okay, we'll be okay. I remember somebody saying, you know, five feet this, and some I got other guys with guns, we'll be fine, right? And there have been super highly trained military, super highly trained law enforcement that have been ambushed. People, I got a, a message, a private message today on, on one of the social media channels where this guy said, hey, uh, his, uh, a friend of his wife's a female self-defense instructor got attacked and didn't do anything. And she wasn't physically harmed, but she's emotionally a mess. Mm -hmm. And he goes, like I was trying to explain to my wife that she just never did enough training to, you know, cause they were talking like, how could this happen? She's a self-defense instructor. And I said, listen, it can happen for a number of reasons, but the answer isn't because she didn't do this or he didn't do this. The answer is because she was surprised because she couldn't recover from the emotional psychological assault. Yep. In 1993, I wrote a treatise for the law enforcement community called Presumed Compliance, The Theory of Presumed Compliance. And the second paragraph in it, I tell people how I think affects how I feel, how I feel affects how I think, both influence how I move. Hmm. And when you think about this, that is not incorporated in anyone's training protocol. There's a there's like a lip service sermon about psychology and physiology and awareness and, and ocular theory and diffuse vision. And, and then you get to shooting. If we talk about, Hey guys, head on a swivel, but let me teach you how to get out of a headlock. Right. When you do a weapon retention drill, if you do your 10,000 reps of it, you got really good at it. But every time you do that rep, what people don't realize is you did 10,001 reps of letting somebody grab your gun. Your brain is being trained to let somebody grab your gun. Yeah. If you're doing wax on, wax off style drills mm -hmm. where you go, throw that punch at me again, faster, harder, faster, try to hit me here again, you go, go. what you're training your, like, your nervous system do is to let the attack happen first. Yeah. Everything that we do, instead of a stimulus response protocol, which is training the neurotransmitter to react a certain way or respond a certain way, semantics, is we do, instead of stimulus response, we do stimulus, 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 stimulus response. And we put in the requisite reps. So we go, what happened before, what happened before, what happened before I had to get out of a headlock? Because if I start seeing that, I'm now moving faster. And where in the hmm. conventional model where action's faster than reaction and the bad guy in an attack is always action, because we build our scenario training differently, and that's one of the big things. Our company has, has three different uh, training platforms. Our SPEAR system. Mm -hmm. spontaneous protection and accelerated response all about weaponizing the start of flinch our whole no fear program k -N -O -W fear how do we get to no fear how do we use fear as a cue how do we use fear as a clue how do we use fear as a fuel how do we reframe fear so that <laughs> so here i am back in australia and there was a moment i'm here like 10 seconds in i see his backs to me he's filling out the waiver and i go dude you're in the fucking fear loop you need to do something you can't wait for this guy to jump you if he's the guy. And this is our choose safety model. If I get a fear spike, I need to choose safety. What is the safest thing I could do? And it may be to fucking barricade myself. It may be to run away. And sometimes it's to charge the threat. And so here, I don't charge. I walk up. Again, pretend he's the R2-D2 here. Mike is the guy. He's got his back to me. I get this close to him. And I tap him on his right shoulder because he's got his back to me. And he looks over his shoulder and he turns around and I put my hand up like this and I could see that he's right-handed by how he's writing. Mm -hmm. Puts the pen down. I go, Hey, I'm Tony Blower. I'm the instructor. And I see his eyes open up wide and he, he reaches and grabs my hand to shake my hand. And I say to him right away at this distance, I go, and I put my left hand up like this. I go, Hey, you have 
a knife in your belt. And I stop there. I don't complete the sentence. And I'm waiting to feel any type of dissonance. Does he tighten? Does he pull? Does he try to let go? Because if I feel the wrong energy, I'm going to drop him. I've already loaded the palm strike, the elbow, the short hook. I'm already playing battleship on his head. And I step into that going tap, tap, tap. Hey, nonviolent posture. I'm Tony Blower. And had he gone and tried to reach for it, I've already hit him. Yep. Stimulus, stimulus response. What happens before it happens before I have to do an X block that I practice? Right? I call that the Star Trek model of self defense, and everyone does it. I did it for decades. How do you get out of a headlock? You all have practice how to get out of a headlock. Where does that drill start? You bend over and put your fucking head down near your, near your, your, your partner's stomach, don't you? Yeah. Let them put you in a headlock. So you don't realize that what you've done is you practice doing this. Right. right? And then letting his arm come. And you do, hey, let's, let's practice getting out of a rear strangle. You turn around and let somebody strangle you. And then you practice your role from there. What does it cost in U.S. currency to back the scenario up? so that your brain gets a look at the auditory, visual, and tactile cues that need to happen before that happens. That's awesome. So this is the brilliant yeah. science. Crazy, right? Yeah. So like, so we do stuff, this is so exciting. Like I've been doing this, like I told you guys, I'm turning 60, man, I'm still, as, I'm more fired up at what we do now because it's much clearer, the divisions, the no fear. We have a scenario training program, ballistic micro fight, uh, ballistic not connect, ballistic explosive micro fight, where we look at the Murphy moments in confrontations and we help people, we train trainers. How do you reverse engineer stuff scientifically? We call it the three R's. How do you make your scenarios realistic, relevant, rigorous? How do we do it safe and scientifically? Because that's the ultimate exposure. I could say, hey, Clint, Matt, meet me by the pool. We're going to talk about you know swimming in the ocean and meeting a shark. And we're in a pool. And I go, this is the breaststroke, and this is the crawl, and this is waiting water. Jump in the pool. You jump in the pool. It's a nice, clean pool. And then I blow up a shark, and I throw it in there, and you, you gouge the eyes. Well, guess what? That's not going to be the same if you're in the ocean, you know, and, and the undertow pulls you out further, and you're like, holy fuck, look how far away we are from the lifeguard stand. And then all of a sudden, you see a fin. Yep. Like, you're not going, we know what to do. You're like, you're going, Drown, dump. Yep. Boom, 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 right? Um, now, you may have to fight, but you have to also fight yourself first. Yeah. You have to fight the fear. The mental game. Yeah. So we've got those three divisions. So here's what happens to end the story. I'm talking to the guy. I go, you got a knife in your pants. And I stop right there. And he looks at me and he looks up and he goes, mate, he said, I got a bunch of bikers after me. I sleep with a shotgun under my bed. I, I'm always carrying. And I'm like, when I got off my bike, Today, I was like looking around, make sure they didn't follow me here. I'm a big fan of your stuff. I've seen you in the magazine. And when I heard you were going to be here, I had to come to the seminar. His story was so perfect, but his energy yeah. was perfect. It all matched up. Yeah. So remember this. Every victim of violence who lived to tell the tale said they had a bad feeling about the attack. So I'm mm-hmm. a big, big believer. And I don't mean this in, the, in a like, like, like spiritual sense, if like, like, like touchy-feely, that – that when we get a bad feeling, that's the energetic presence, that aura of, and you all know this, you walk down the street, you might see, you walk by a lot of homeless dudes, but you've also walked by homeless dudes that you go, that guy's dangerous. And yep. you, and it's not that you mm-hmm. don't know how to fight, but you go, whoa, let's, let's fucking yeah. take a step out here. Smarter because, to not be in it. Yeah, but you sense energetically that this guy's off and I want as much distance between him as possible for two reasons. I don't want to be near him. And if he does move because he distance. spooked me a little bit, I got distance. A little yep. bit of space and a little bit of time. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the show. Would you like to tell our audience how they can learn more about your systems, your company, and, and perhaps get into some of your classes? Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm all over the usual social media places, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, uh, and of course, our website, which is Blauer Spear, my last name, Blauer, B L A U E R S P E A R dot com, Blauer Spear. You just Google it, there's, there's stuff all over the place. If you want to see what I eat, follow me on Instagram. If you want to, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. It was some, we, we, we do some uh, pretty interactive. Uh, I, I write all my posts. I don't hire a company, I answer everyone when I can. So we try to educate uh, remotely as much as we can. 
and of course on my website there's a listing of all the courses and we do stuff where depending on who you are and what you want uh, be your own bodyguard course if you're just a citizen that goes man i just want to be a little safer this sounded interesting easy to host one you don't you like if you don't, can't find one near you contact us if you can get 20 people together we'll send one of my world-class trainers to you and then we've got stuff, of course, for law enforcement, for military, and we do corporate stuff and all that stuff, digital shit online. So it's, uh, we've got something for everybody. Cool. Well, it's de- definitely been a, a huge honor to have you on the show, and we appreciate you uh, coming on. Thank you, guys. I, I, I had a great time. And, uh, you know, I'm a stream of ta- uh, consciousness instructor. I tell 90 stories. I don't, I don't know if I, if I completed every story, but if there are questions uh, and any of your listeners go, whatever happened with this or ask them this, I'd be more than happy to answer a question. Thank you, Ben, and the show. Yeah. Stay safe. Have a great night. You too, guys. There's a lot of sponsors that make this show possible, like Mantis. Make sure you check them out and give them your business. This episode is brought to you by Mantis. Mantis X helps shooters suck less. Meet the Presser is sponsored by Next Level Training, Saber Red, Cutting Edge Bullets, the USCCA, McLean Corporation, ASP, Custom Poker Chip Company, Common Sense Self-Defense, and T1 Ammunition. Meet the Pressers is also generously supported by these fine companies, ranges, and our Patreon members. Thank you. Thanks for watching the show. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, click the little bell, come on Patreon, help support us that way, come to one of our classes, or host us, we can come to you and do one of our courses at your location. So until next time, adieu. Thank you for watching Meet the Pressers. 